I've got a job at the moment where I need to make a whole bunch of these little price labels so I thought I'd show you how I do it. The labels themselves are made from 0.2mm thick aluminium business card material with some perforation lines so they can be folded. These uh, hook onto the, the edge of uh, a picture frame. Uh, I've set it up so I can cut four at a time from a single business card. The cards themselves, here's one here, are held in a little jig I made uh, with three locating screws so the card can just be sat in against the screws and then another piece on top goes over and a couple of binder clips either side hold it down. I had to do this because the, the business card material being so thin tends to curl up uh, as you're cutting multiple pieces out of it. Uh, so that's uh, this is all laser cut uh, 6mm acrylic. So that's the actual holding arrangements. The, the file <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I managed to figure out how to get EasyCAD to read in from Excel and I was only able to do this after watching Jeffrey Jay's excellent video so I'll put a link to his one down in the description below. Um, okay, how best to demonstrate this? Well, here's the... Here's the Excel file I've got. Uh, let me go to... All data. So I've got four columns, line one, line two, line three, and the price. If I get a card, so there's uh, okay the second line down there. Line one, two, and three are the sort of description uh, text for the, the item, and price is obviously the price. Uh, lines one, two, and three appear in this font and the price appears down the bottom in bold font. Surprise, surprise. Uh, put this past you. So remember that X, uh, EasyCAD will only read the first sheet from the Excel file. So in data for marking, these are the four labels which will be marked. And just now I've got in some filler text just so you can get the idea. Uh, close the Excel file and go back to EasyCAD. Now because the text in these is done in reverse, in other words I'm hatching away, uh, the, the business cards are black to start with and I'm hatching away everything else. Um, let me take oh, level 3, okay. So each label is grouped and uh, don't worry about the order, that will become apparent later. Let me take the last one and ungroup it. And let me also take the hatch and delete the hatch so you can see what's going on. So that's this label down here. So first of all we've got a cutout line, that's the black one. Then we've got two dotted areas. These are actually hatched right through the sheet. These provide the fold lines. And then we've got the three items for the text hatch. The hatch perimeter, which is this red outline here. And then the two text elements, price and description. That's what's appearing here. So if I look at uh, description first of all, and look down here, I've got variable text enabled and I've got several elements in the list. So if I look at the first one, you can see it's reading in data from that Excel file. Line number three, which is, remember EasyCAD starts counting as line one is here, so one, two, three is indeed item three. Close that. 
and it's reading in the line 1 field name then there's a new line character then it's reading in line 2 new line and then line 3 so that gives us the three lines of text there for the price it's simply reading in the price field name so all of that's okay then the two text items and the hatch perimeter are all hatched together. Let me see if I can do this. Select all of them. Hatch. All of that's still the same. Okay. Apply. So that will now hatch everything except the text. I can now get the order of this correct. So the sequence again is it does some passes to do the cutout, it then does the fold lines, it then does the hatch, and then it does more cutout passes to basically make sure it really is cut out. I found this to be the best way to do it. Uh, let me just group all of them together and uh, call it label 3. Label 3. Okay. So Right, so let's say we actually want to go and uh, do something useful. So we go to our Excel sheet. Now I've put all of the data, this is all the data I need to do today. And uh, let's copy, let's see, these four into, uh, where are we? Paste. Save that. You have to close Excel when you're running EasyCAD, otherwise it doesn't work. Close that, go back to EasyCAD. Now, to get a preview of what it'll actually look like, EasyCAD only reads data in from the file when you actually hit mark. So we're going to make sure there's nothing there that can get damaged. In fact, I'll just put a, a ceramic tiles handy. And uh, I'll just mark it, stop marking, there we go. So that's loaded these four from the file. So now let's actually mark something. We take a blank business card, set it in there, put the plate on top to hold it, binder clips on, I'm going to turn on the extractor fan so it'll get a bit noisy. And we're ready to run. I don't know if you can see, but the smoke from the engraving is being carried off to the extractor fan here and it's been carried across the surface of the car. So I chose to mark the four labels in the order, let me remember, two, one, four, three. So the smoke that's going this way doesn't mess up an already engraved card. You can also see how it's doing two cutout passes. Actually, I can probably. I'll wait till it's finished just in case I mess anything up. Let it 
do that. One thing I should add, EasyCAD could in theory, once it's done four labels, it could in theory automatically advance to the next four labels. But I've told it not to do that because I found it a bit confusing just which four it chooses. Um, and if I need to go back and do one again or something, it, it gets pretty complicated. So all it's doing is just these four in here and I'm quite happy just copying and pasting the data into that. I can do that while it's marking. So there we go, that's finished. And I should be able to just pop out. There we go. And these fold up. Let me see if I can do it one-handed. Uh, one there, and... Not bad. So, I hope you found that interesting. The ability to read data in from an Excel file is really fantastic with EasyCAD, especially because in this particular setup, um, the, the text object is inside a hatch object, which is inside a group. So if I wanted to change the text manually, I'd have to ungroup, remove the hatch, change it, redo the hatch, regroup, which would be impossible. Now, one thing that I did have trouble with is reading in a pound sign. Now, that was when I was reading it from a text file, but let's actually see... Um, let me see, okay, let's change that to... Something with a lot of pound signs. Close, mark, stop... Ah, uh, where are we? Oh, okay. So it looks like you can indeed read in a pound sign from Excel. Originally when I was doing this with a text file before I tried Excel, I wasn't able to read in a pound sign. So what I did instead was, uh, if I ungroup that, delete hatch, get the text price object, there. I put in a fixed pound sign character and then just read in the number from the external file. But it looks like that uh, you can read a pound sign in from Excel, so that's no problem. Anyway, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.